What is going on, guys? Episode 209 of the Michael Labs show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Thursday. Happy Friday. Happy YouTube, Spotify, or Apple, or Google Podcast, or iHeartRadio, wherever you listen to your podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I'm back. Uh, episode 209. Um, I'm currently in the process of recording vlog number two. It's kind of weird doing the vlogs because I don't want to waste. I don't want to. When you do a podcast, you got to fill 40 minutes. In my case, you got to fill 40 minutes of just solo talking. So it's complicated. It's not the easiest thing to do. It's not hard. Talking for 40 minutes is not hard. Um, you got to be a little bit of a narcissist, <laughs> a little bit of a narcissist. Um, it's not the hardest thing to do in the world. With that being said, it's not that easy. And also with that being said, since I've promised people two podcasts a week, which is I something I want to do, um, I have to be very aware of the things I talk about and write them down. So when push comes to shove and when the lights come on literally and the mic comes on, I can talk, right? So I could talk. Otherwise, I will just be talking about nothing, and you know, I like to have some type of rhythm to my podcast. Uh, but so doing the vlogs, I'm kind of just trying to like keep those subjects to the vlogs and certain subjects to the podcast. Uh, but the vlog did well; you guys enjoyed it, and um, I thank everybody for watching that. I already mentioned it in the last episode, um, but I'm in the process of recording vlog number two, and it's been fun. It's been exciting. Um, it's weird, like when you when you vlog, you don't realize, but there's a lot of wasted time, like like for a driving scene. Like at least I don't know really where the vlog world is today. Uh, I'm gonna keep doing the vlogs that I used to do, that I enjoy doing, that I know how to do. I'm on my branch out, maybe, but as of right now, I'm just gonna keep doing the vlog styles that I do, talking a little bit, few ideas, clips here and there, cutting things up. That's more of what I like to do. But like, for example, and I, I talked about it, I'm going to talk about it on Monday, but when I, I, I backed in, when I cu just come home, just come home from the gym to go get food, I, I want to record myself getting home, opening the garage, coming in, getting the food, blah, 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 blah. But in order to do that, <clears throat> you got to back into your car, back into the driveway, take your camera out. So you got to get out of your car, then set up your camera, turn the camera on, and then you got to go back out of your driveway and then turn around to come back, and then pull in, stop. So I've, I've left my driveway once, and I'm coming back in. Um, and as I'm doing this, some lady's walking her dog. She's probably like, "What the hell is this crazy person doing?" So you gotta do that. You gotta then you gotta get out of the car, grab the camera. Um, you gotta walk. I gotta walk inside because I want to get a, a video footage of me opening the garage, which is so funny because if you're the viewer, if you're thinking, which I, I hope viewers are thinking. Um, if you're thinking, you you could be like, what is he doing? Like, he's got to get out of his car. He's got to open the garage. So I got to put the put the camera inside. Then I got to get back out of the garage, shut the garage, and then get out of my car door again, walk into the garage, open the garage. Walk. It's just like it's a bunch of extra steps. And it's and I guess if you do vlogs, you kind of understand. Otherwise, you, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, but anyways, that's going on. I'm very excited about that. A few things have been happening. Um, thing number one is I've been driving with an expired tag on my car for about four or five months now. I went ahead and ordered them, and when it came in, I didn't I didn't look to the right. Like there's a you get the card right, and they tell you this is your new tag number, whatever. We've updated it and everything, but I couldn't. I I'm such an I'm such an idiot. I'm. I'm so ADD and so in like the most minute ways. So I go to look at my, um, I go to look at the thing and I'm like, where the hell's the tag? I look to the right. It's right there, but I don't see it. I just put it back in. I'm like, oh, whatever. Maybe they're going to send it later. And so I wait, I wait and I wait. Uh, and then I'm like, this is kind of stressful. Like I'm looking for cops. If a cop gets behind me, I slow down, let them get around me. I get behind them, which is really sketchy. And I probably shouldn't do that, especially if I'm a cop. If I was a cop and I saw that, I'd be like, what is going on? Um, 
And then I'm like, oh, dude, they must have sent it to me. So I look back into my car and I look to the right of the piece of paper and it's right there. June 2023. It's right there. Put it on my car. Just felt like an idiot. I did that last weekend. I felt like an absolute idiot. Uh, but I'm happy I got it fixed. You know, it's a good thing I got it fixed. Um, so now I'm not driving with expired tags anymore. Uh, another thing is I was locked out of my um, my credit card. My credit card, uh, not score, but my credit card cash back. I have 29,000 points. I don't know if that's good. Like, let's see. Uh, average household household credit card points. Points. How much does the average person have in credit card debt? Balance of $2,000. We have the lowest. Generation Z. Actually, I don't think I'm Generation Z. Average, yeah, I can't see points. I can just see credit card debt. Anyway, so I want to get my points. I kind of want to get cash back. I can get like AirPods once I get to like 35,000. Anyway, so I, but like I haven't been able to get in. I've just been like uh, procrastinating like an idiot. So today I finally like, okay, let's call these people. So I called the place and I talked to them and they reset my password and I get in and now I have 29,000 points I can use and I don't know what to use them on. You know, I have no idea like what I want to use them on. I can get like $200 cash back right now for 20,000 points. If I get to 50,000 points, I get $500 back. I don't know if I want cash or I want like Apple. I think I want cash because cash I can invest and I would much rather invest it. And I have school payments coming up, $3,800 for school, which is fine because I'm still waiting on my tax returns, unfortunately. Um, in addition to that, I, uh, long story, I'm not going to get into it. Um, in addition to that, like Maryland, I think it's Maryland. I, I, it could be a federal thing, but like there's this new um, uh, grant that's going out. It's called the H-E-E-R-F grant, I think it's called. H-E-E-R-F, yeah, the HERF grant. Higher Education Emergency Relief Fund. Um, coronavirus Emergency Grants for Post-Secondary Education it was a HERT grant. Um, HERF 1, HERF 2, HERF 3. Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act, Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations Act, and the American Rescue Plan. Yeah, so basically... I'm getting back $2,000 for that, which is really nice. So I can put that to my school. Uh, I'm going to put everything on credit card, obviously, because I want to, you know. My goal right now by 30 is to have, like, I want, not even by 30, by, honestly, by 26, I want a perfect credit score. I didn't really know about a credit score until literally this time last year. And I opened up my, uh, I finally, I got Credit Karma, which I know is probably, like, not the most accurate thing. I don't think it even shows a FICO credit score. Um, but I went ahead and looked at my credit score and it was like 657, which at the time was like average. I was like, okay, that's okay. But I've been able to get it up to 747. Um, I might, I don't know. I don't know if this is a smart idea, a good idea. So this is just me and my brain talking to each other. Um, I think about opening another credit card to increase my credit score again, and then just utilizing two credit cards and maybe make this one like more of a niche credit card. Like just use this one for coffee just for Starbucks, um, because I do want to get my credit. I want to get a perfect credit score, 850, which I don't know if I can do. I want to get at least 800. Um, I know I'm a well well above average for um, kids my age in the country or in the world. Um, but with a perfect credit score, you can do like you can do everything. Like a perfect credit score gets you loans. Loans get you rental properties. Um, like it gets you assets, which is like that's what you need. Like it's weird. Like this last, um, this last inflation rate data came out for June. Inflation was up five. It was up to five point four percent. And it's one of those things where if you I, let me, there's a stat that I pulled up here which I, I really like. Um, this is from Finance Josh. I follow him all the time. He's amazing. He's on Instagram. He's one of my go to guys when it comes to like finance information. I don't like listen to what he says because I do. I have my own thing. Like. I, I, I kind of want to give an update on my um, portfolio because I feel like I haven't really talked about that for a while. Um, and I do actually have things I do want to end up getting into. Um, what's his face is talking today? Pal's talking. Um, but he has this really good slide that he put up. Uh, okay. So he put this up on the 13th of July. He says, U.S. inflation is now at 5.4% 5, 5 one year. Um, over a year, beating economists' expectations of 5%. And that means that $100,000 saved under a mattress a year ago today is now only worth 
in terms of purchasing power. Savers are losers, investors are winners. Um, and I want to read one more to you that I, I bombard my girlfriend with these, and I'm sure she doesn't read them, because why would you? Um, because I, I, I send them nonstop to her. That's hilarious. Here we go. Um, I can't find it. Okay, here we go. So this is from Lloyd James Ross on Twitter. From June 29th, um, if you is so it says if you invested a hundred dollars in the S and P um, 500 back in 1900, it would be worth 8.6 million today. And the S and P doesn't go back that far, but just like an accumulation account. Um, if you had uh, saved 100 dollars in a savings account in 1990, in 1900, it would be worth two dollars today. Basically, what I'm trying to say is like that good old adage of like saving your money. I'm, and this is not financial advice. This is not me telling people what to do. And I got to get that out of the way right immediately. But to me right now, the th and, and so I, there's a lot of comparisons to 1918 going into the roaring twenties. The twenties were crazy. The Dow was up 500% in the twenties. Um, as much as I do believe in that, as much as I do think that the 2020s are going to be, if not better than the 1920s, we all got to remember that after the pandemic in 1918, there was a Great Depression in 1920 to 1921. And I do worry. I do worry about this inflation. You know, um, but Powell, at least as of right now, as I'm recording this, he, he's calling this um, tran tran transitionary. Trans Basically, it's an expected inflation. But I'm not fully confident on that. Like, I don't know how controlled in reality this inflation is. I think it can get very, very high. Um, so right now, in my personal opinion, this is not financial advice whatsoever. I think assets are where you want to put your money. Like I think owning assets is something that is going to pay off in 10 years, like more than ever, like just saving your money right now. And it, this sounds so dumb, but like when someone pays me a dollar or $3 where I work, I feel like they should give me more because I feel like the, I, it's dumb, but I feel like the paper is losing value. Every time I like hold coins and dollars, I'm like, what are we even doing here? Like, first of all, why do we even have cash? So I, like, I know why we have cash, but it's weird. Like this inflation is, it's, it's creeping up high. And I really do think that once like the holidays come around, spending is going to be an, at an all time high. Like I, like last year, uh, spending was huge for like Target and Amazon. But I think you're going to see, I, I don't know. I think you're going to see, you're going to see a lot of money flooded into the markets. Um, into the economy and, and hopefully the stock market. So I think assets right now where you want to keep your money. I really do like more than ever. And I think having savings is important and, you know, six months savings, like that's really important. So that if you lost your job, could you cover six months of expenses? Could you? Um, I think I could, I, I'm right. I'm probably three to four months. Um, I need to get that to six months. Um, but with school and everything. And I also kind of have it. I don't pay for rent right now. So that's a huge thing. Um, but I think assets. I mean, I think the dollars are going to continue to lose value, and I think if you invest it, it's, you're gonna you're gonna protect yourself a lot. Um, and like my portfolio is so simple. I, the money I've invested, I've invested about four thousand dollars into Bitcoin and Dogecoin. Um, I haven't added money, and obviously they're like down big right now. I think I'm down like forty percent on on Bitcoin. Um, and I'm up still on Dogecoin. But I think I think Bitcoin could still get to 100k by the end of the year, which I know is crazy. But I, I really do. I'm I'm still confident in it. In it, and um, I don't add money. I don't take money. I'm not going to sell at a loss for Bitcoin. I know it's going to get up to at least break even. But I really do think if you, I think right now it's weeding the week out. I think Bitcoin is going to stay for a long time. It's a store of asset. I think a lot of big businesses are buying it right now. And I think we're on their earnings sheets. You're going to see that on their balance sheet that there is Bitcoin added as a long-term asset. That's just, that's just what I think. I also believe in Dogecoin because I believe in memes. I believe in the internet, which sounds so dumb. And I know people out there who are like traditional stock investors right now, like listen to me like, yo, what are you talking about? What do you mean believe in memes? I just think that's the wave. I think that's the future. And I, and I, you know, I, I think Elon Musk is one of the greatest minds of, of, of living today of our generation, if not one of the greatest minds of all time, at least when it comes to like moving the pin forward. And I think Dogecoin is his baby. And I really do think he's going to make it more usable. 
And I don't know what that means. And I sound crazy for saying that, but I just believe that because everything he touches seems to do well, you know? And I think, I think, I don't think this is a miss. I think I don't have that much money in it. I only have like 7,000 coins. My average cost is 17 cents. So it's not even that, it's not even that low. I'm barely breaking even, but you know, honestly, $4,000, I'm willing to like lose that if I sell it, but I'm just going to keep that, not even think about it. Um, but the, my majority of my portfolio is uh, technology, so the QQQ, Invesco QQQ, um, the broad market, so the S&P, so Vanguard S&P 500. And then I have about 12% allotted to uh, Arc X, which is um, Kathy Wood's space exploration company. And I think that's, I, I think that's just going to, I think that's going to be the next, besides Bitcoin making the next billionaires, I think if you can develop the product, if you can invest into a product that has anything to do with space exploration or travel, or even using like the stratosphere or the atmosphere, or whatever it is, the thing that's above the earth, I'm so stupid, the mesosphere, I don't know. I think if you can do anything with that, it's going to, it's going to pay high dividends, um, I, I only own about a hundred shares in it. Like I said, only 11% of my portfolio, but I, you know, I dollar cost average. So I DCA. So I put money in there each and every week. Uh, I've taken a few weeks off right now to pay for school and stuff, but I really do think it's going to be a huge, huge market. And that's all. I just own that. I just DCA dollars cost average each week. Nothing crazy. I'm only putting about $500 away a month. Um, I'm, I'm the goal. I'm, I'm very confident. I'm very bullish on like this last half year for, uh, for me. And then for Taylor as well. Um, we're both making huge life changes right now. I am, uh, when I get off this podcast, I'm going downstairs. I'm filling out applications left and right. I'm going to try to fill out 10 applications a day. I just been my resume. It looks really good. Um, but we are trying to make a huge move. Um, we're trying to claim our independence and it's really, it's, it's honestly really exciting. Um, I'm looking forward to the future. I want to continue investing, but I want to invest more and more. If I can put away like eight hundred to a thousand dollars a month, that, that's crazy, you know. And like I've managed to, I've managed to live my life making like low, like low money, like no shade. Just it's just low money because that's that's what I do. It's my choice. I'm I'm in school. Like I'm in school, bro. Like I need to put school first. That's like the thing I need to get out of the way. As much as I want to move on to step two, I need to get step one out of the way. And right now. I've been on step one since 2013, um, but I need I need I need to push through, uh, push through this. And um, in addition to that, I think I think 2022 is going to be a huge year. 2021 has been a huge year, honestly. Like it's been a huge freaking year. Like I'm almost graduate. I'm going to graduate. Um, investing and saving has gone through the roof. Uh, just a lot of like personal growth too for me. I feel like I've I've taken long strides, um, huge strides. Um, but that's the goal. Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to start filling out these applications, testing the market a little bit right now. I know, like, I know companies are struggling to hire people right now. So you, it's, it's like the perfect time to work right now is, is right now. Why? Because companies are struggling to get people in. You have the leverage. I say it, but I don't know if I'm going to implement it because it's, it would be nerve. I've never done an interview before. I think I could kick ass at an interview. Way to be humble. But I really do. I think I can kick ass at an interview. But like right now, the ball's in your in your court. You know, people are not like people are struggling to go back to work. And you, you see companies right now. And don't get me wrong. I think it's I I don't know. I think I'm indifferent on this a little bit. Um, I think I'm, I'm slightly indifferent on this, but I think companies right now are letting people stay home from work. Um, you go ahead and stay in for work. I know you're scared, blah, 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 even though you've been vaccinated and we've all been vaccinated, but you're still scared. I think you're just taking advantage of the system. Um, there's going to be a huge change in the working environment. Are we going to cut down to four days a week? Are we going to do five days a week, but two days are home, three days are in office, three days are home, two days in office. Do we even need offices anymore? Like there's a lot of things happening. Um, but I do think these companies are going to start just getting rid of people Start hiring people that are willing to come to the office, willing to work really hard. Um, and I know wherever I go, I'm going to work my ass off. And also wherever I go, my goal is to, um, wherever I go, my goal is to is to move up. I want to move up. And I'm going to start filling out applications. I'm looking for like the Baltimore, um, D.C. area, but preferably Baltimore. 
Um, Taylor and I have been looking at living up in Towson because one of her, the one of her dream jobs is in Baltimore, um, and I can and one of, there's a potential job that I'm kind of working on, but it's kind of been going south a little bit, um, and that's that would be a perfect spot for us. Um, I don't really know what field I want to get in. I'm just kind of applying everywhere, seeing if I get accepted, seeing how far I can get in each process. Uh, the other issue is I am still in school. So whoever I do come in contact with, it's, I, I work, I have three classes, right? And not that I work, I work, but I have three classes, um, Mondays and Wednesdays from two to 6 PM. Um, um, Monday, yeah. Monday, and then Tuesday and Thursday from like 10 AM to 12. So it's, it's a hard time for me to work, but, um, with remote learning, I think I can do that for a few months. Even if I could just set something up where it'd be like, Hey man, we'll go through the interview process and we like you, we'll hire you. But and then I'll be like, I can't start to January. Like, okay, that's fine. You start to January. Um, it's exciting. I've never been this excited about a lot. You know, I, I've never, I've never, I struggle so much, not with confidence. I, I'm, I think I'm confident more than the average, but pride. I, I don't have, I'm not prideful of anything I do. Like everything I do, I just hate. And it sounds so strange play this podcast I'm not pr- like I'm proud of it but I'm not satisfied with it I see it and I notice all the issues with it and I'm embarrassed in a lot of ways um with the vlogs I'm embarrassed in a lot of ways I just want to do better and better and better um so this is like this is reassuring to me like the, getting this degree is like reassuring to me like hey man you worked hard for this and you deserve that um it's a good feeling but I'm going to start testing the market. Taylor and I are going to start testing the market. I think it's going to be a huge year. I'm very excited. I haven't been this excited, like I said, for anything in a long, long time. Um, but we'll see. You know, we'll see what the future holds for both of us. And uh, I'm I'm on the ride, and I'm ready for the ride. Um, what else has been going on? This outfit, by the way, I don't... Okay, so my <laughs> one of my buddies at the gym, really good guy. He's a veteran. I like him a lot. Um, he's... He's a sweetheart. His name is Brian, and he got me this hat because I've been growing my hair out. You guys see that? It's in my hair. It looks horrible. I got a cut. Um, I got I got this dry in um, conditioner, leave in conditioner. It's not not stay in, not dry in, but leave in conditioner because I got to teach. I'm going for a um, a Bradley Cooper look, so I'm growing my hair out like real long. I'm just gonna go back here, um, but there's like a process to it. Schumer will propose federal decriminalization of marijuana. What does that mean for the market? Let's see what that sees for the market. I got to see. THCX. Don't, I don't own that anymore. I used to own it, but I don't own it anymore. Okay, it means nothing. It has done nothing. <laughs> of course not. That's why I got out of that. Um, but I'm growing my hair out, and he says I have to teach my hair to go backwards like that. So I got to get this leave-in conditioner, and I got to leave it in. And let it go backwards, and I got to teach it to grow backwards, I guess, because my hair parts down the middle. He was very, um, he was very impressed with my hair. He said it grows a lot, and he says I make great progress with my hair growth. I'm like, dude, that's from eating meat. I eat meat and cheese, and that's why it's so long, dude. Um, but it's a great hat. I like it. It's like got holes in it. It's a good hat, but I worry. I've gotten my entire life. Not my entire life, but since I've been like 19, 20, and I started really putting on a little bit of muscle, I just keep my hair really short. And so I've been asked, I don't know, thousands of thousands of times, uh, what branch did you serve in, son? Or uh, when did you get back, son? Or how long have you been in the service, son? And I'm like, haven't. Haven't been in the service, not military at all. And I don't want you to think I am because I feel bad because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't put my life down. I didn't trade my life for the service. And it's like, a, it's like cultural appropriation to me. You know, it's like job appropriation, career appropriation. Um, but in all seriousness, I don't want people to think I'm in the military when I've never served a day in the military. Um, I, I guess I carry myself around kind of like a military person because I did grow up in a household of, you know, police officers. Um, so maybe a, there's that, or maybe I just have the confidence of someone in the military, or maybe I just, I'm a white male with short hair and that means military. I don't, I don't know what it means. Um, in that case, you'd be stereotyping my dude. Um, anyways, but I like this hat, 
but it looks very military. And I'm like kind of nervous to wear it because I don't want people to think I'm in the military. The thing that I don't want to happen is people think I'm in the military. They don't ask me if I'm in the military. And then months go by and then they start talking military to me and they're in the military and I'm not in the military. And then I say, no, I'm not in the military. And they go like, oh, okay. And they lose respect for me. Even though I never said I was in the military, they just assumed I was in the military. And then I'm wearing this crab that has guns for the nipples. And that looks, I don't know what that looks like, but I like this shirt. It's kind of a, it's an edgy shirt. Like I've never realized this is like an edgy shirt. I got crabs shooting, shooting the sky, dog. Pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Um, but it's a really comfy hat. You give me an American flag patch. I'm probably not going to wear it because, um, because then it, I think it would definitely look like um, I'm in the military. And I can't have that. I cannot have that. Um, there's this, where the, what is it? GBS syndrome? Okay. So this is crazy. This is crazy. And this is crazy because the rarity of this disease is like, um, I could pull it up. Instead of just saying crazy shit, I should actually know what I'm talking about. Um, it's called GPS GBS syndrome, and I think it's called it's it's Guillain Barre syndrome, Barre syndrome, B A R R E. I'm not French, or whatever that is. Um, but it's a super rare disease, and it's so it's a condition in which the immune system attacks the nerves. It's a condition may be triggered by an acute bacterial or um, um, Viral infection. Symptoms start as weakness and tingling in the feet and legs that spread to the upper body. Paralysis can occur. Special blood treatments, plasma exchange, and Im immunoglobin therapy can relieve symptoms. Physical therapy is needed. Anyways, it's a very rare thing. Fewer than 20,000 cases. Now, I'm not going to say where or who, but I'm, I'm going to say who, but not the name, and you're not going to know what I'm talking about. Um... But I think it's also called locked eye syndrome. I, th I think. I could be wrong on that. Not a doctor. No medical experience. Don't take any medical advice from me at all. You end up dead on the side of the highway. So don't do that. But it's really rare. And I first heard about in a podcast. I was listening to Chris Stefano, And he was a physical therapist. Physical therapist. He had his... Uh, his um, his medical degree in physical therapy, licensed physical therapist, technically a doctor. So Dr. Chris De Stefano, Dr. De Stefano, very Italian, definitely a mobster. Um, gotta stop kicking that. Looks terrible. Um, the light I'm talking about. I'm not talking to Michael. I'm talking to the light. And um, it, it 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 comes from vaccines and it comes from viruses and you can have a stomach flu. And then days go by and you're fine. And then one day you wake up and you can't move your body and you're just in complete paralysis, but it goes away. It can go away and it can go away after two days and go away after months and go after a year. But then one day you wake up and you're just fine. It's a really rare thing. At first it sounds like MS, which is, um, a myelin sheath thing. Your myelin sheath slowly erodes over time. So your nerves can't connect to each other as quickly. So then you stop being able to function. It's a slow deterioration. It's probably one of the worst muscular uh, muscular diseases out there, if not the worst. Um, it's just sad and depressing, and it's not good. And GPS can't be; it cannot be cured. But you do physical therapy to try to just move, essentially. But there's this guy. So I heard about it about a month ago. Very rare. I never hear about it. I, like my whole life, is, like I've just been bombarded with GPS, 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 Green Bay psychopaths. Sociopaths. Psychopath is a P. I'm an idiot. Um, there's this guy who has it. And then, but this guy is one of the only people in the world who's had it twice. He had it 15 years ago. And this is a guy that I, he's in my world. I don't know him directly, but he's in my world. He had it. Woke up one day. Was fine. 15 years went by. And he was hit with it again. He's one of the only people in the entire world who's had it twice. And then the very next day, I hear about this girl who, once again, I, I didn't speak to, but I know of her. She's in my facility. She comes up to us. She comes up to I, I hear about it. She came up to somebody, and she said that she, um, after she got the vaccine, she then developed GBS. And I'm like, what? 
Seriously, like, I, I, there's always right. There's always risk from vaccines. And by the way, this isn't like I'm not I'm not BSing. Like, I'm not saying this to not get the vaccine. This is what happens when you know enough people get the vaccine. These things happen. And then the FDA. So, um, so even okay. This is an article from USA Today that came out July 14th. Uh, even though the FDA um, updated the warning label on Johnson Johnson coronavirus vaccine to include an increased risk of a rare neurological disorder, health experts say Americans shouldn't worry. Um, so the odds of developing Gillian Bear syndrome after getting the COVID-19 shot, they say, are less than getting it from other vaccines, bacteria, and viruses, including SARS-CoV-2, uh, the virus that caused COVID-19. The label updated Monday says reports suggest an increased risk of GBS within 42 days after getting vaccinated. In a statement, the FDA said the data suggests an association, but not enough to establish a casual, causal relationship. Um, experts uh, urge Americans to continue getting the vaccines. Um, but it's just crazy, dude. Like, like meeting one person who has it, it's like one in a million. But just meeting one person who has it is like, that you may never run into that. But then, 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 then hearing someone get it, get, hearing about two people getting it in in the span of two days, it's like, like what the hell, dude? It's terrifying. It's really scary. Really scary. Um, but yeah, the FDA did give a warning out about Johnson Johnson and um, possible increase of developing GBS. Not saying that. Um, uh, okay, that's awesome. I don't want to read that right now. It seems very hectic, Miss Taylor. Um, thank God our. Oh, that's good. That's really good. I'd rather have that than the other option because. I don't do well with throw up, even though I don't have to witness it. I'm just not a fan of it. I love podcasting. You guys are the best with listening. Thank you so much for letting me live out my dream. Um, what else? What else is going on? Oh, the uh, the <laughs> I was I was just kind of saying it. I was just completely joking around about it. But I was like, oh, the CIA. Did I say that? I don't know. I was like, the CIA put a hit out on the Haitian pre- president, and then like right now, not not that the CIA did it, but there's like stuff coming out like. There's a, there's a connection with, like, the DEA and Haitian president in Florida, and you're like, oh, my God, what is happening? And then you look across the world right now, and, like, shit is going down. You see what's going on in South Africa right now? Straight up chaos. I don't know much about it. I do know the uh, the former South African president was uh, arrested and put in prison. I don't know his relationship with uh, South Africa. Um, I don't know if it's good or positive, but the people are rebellion, rebelling against uh, the government there. The Haitian governor was just shot and killed. Um, what else is going on? Nigeria and like the, uh, the Tilgrays. Um, uh, I mean, obviously, uh, North Korea and whatever they do down there, which nobody really knows what they do, but it's crazy whatever happens down there. Um, oh, and then on top of that, the United States just passed... Uh, I don't know. Biden to rally Senate Democrats on spending goals after they reached $3.5 trillion budget deal for infrastructure deal. Uh, Democrats unveiled $3.5 trillion human infrastructure budget proposal. Um, Senate Democrats announced agreement on $3.5 trillion top line for sweeping budget package. Moderates want to cut the spending on Biden's plan. They should remember 2010. Democrats un- unveiled $3.5 trillion to go to loan to plan. So I don't know if that means it's been passed. Um, I just know they came to an agreement, so that's a lot. Of, that's a lot more money being pumped in the economy, which has been that's what we've been doing lately. It's kind of been our mo. Like the rest of the world is probably like, how the hell is America just pumping out all this money? Where are they getting it from? And that, my friend, I don't have an answer for. I would say taxes, but billionaires don't pay them. And the average person isn't paying them either. Watch this. Ready? Percentage of Americans who pay taxes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um. Here you go. <laughs> In 2019, about 46.6 percent of U.S. households with an income between 40 and 50 uh, 50 thousand U.S. dollars pay no income tax. Um, how much does the average U.S. pay? Uh, um, the 47 percent. 
Yeah. For, okay, so this came out in 2000. I don't know. Just say the number 47% and many people know exactly what you're talking about. It was a calculation that the Tax Policy Center did a decade ago. And the share of people who pay no federal income tax. At least six, at least among... At least among tax and political geeks, the number became a numerical equivalent of those celebrities who are so famous that that only their first names are necessary. Sort of the LeBron of tax policy. Age and non-payers. Um, I don't know. Why can't I just get a straight answer, dude? Um, what is this? What is this? What is this? From Statista. Um, okay, here we go. Allow. So. Stop it. Stop it. Okay, so the percentage of the country that pay income tax is 56.7%. Households that don't pay income tax are 43.3%. So only 56.7% of the country pays their income tax. 99.9% of people who make more than a million dollars do pay their income tax. Um, Whereas if you make less than... 10,000 only 0.2 pay their income tax. Um, so the median range, let's say 50 to 75, 67 point, 67.4 pays it, 32.6 do not pay it. So, like, we got to remember, like, most of the country doesn't pay their income tax, like, more than half does, just barely by 6.7 percent. But a lot of people don't pay their income tax, and like, that's the thing that people don't talk about. Like, it's not just the rich, and like, don't get me wrong, I, I think. I don't think they're cheating the system, right? They're, they're playing by the system, the system that was created. Like, you got to remember, the people who create these laws about taxes, like, they're, they're the reason why there's loopholes in the tax system is because the people who make the laws, they create them so that they can get away with it, too. Like, these loopholes aren't just... If, if they wanted to close these loopholes up, they would do it immediately. But the reason why you don't do it immediately is because... They benefit the people who are making the loopholes. Like, it's so commonsensical. It's so commonsensical. That's why they don't fix it. Because then it would hurt them bottom line, their bottom line. Same reason why Nancy Pelosi and her husband are buying the dip on tech when they when they say that they're putting in five antitrust tech bills, buying the dip, and then selling them when tech takes off. Same thing. These people are dirty. Politicians are dirty. I don't care if you hate Trump. I don't care if you hate Joe Biden, but they are both dirty as hell. Talking about dirty as hell. If you guys want to laugh really hard and if you don't like laughing, I don't want you to listen to my podcast because if I don't trust you who don't laugh. Laughing is all I live for. It really is. I live my life so I can laugh more. I love laughing. It's a passion of mine. It's a beautiful passion of mine, and it's something that I can't go without. Laughing is beautiful. It makes me smile. The podcasts I listen to are comedians because comedians are funny, and comedians make me giggle, and I love giggling. Giggling is my favorite thing to do. It's so fun. But if you want to laugh, look up Joe Biden Corn Pop. It's from eight months ago. He's at a pool, and um, he is at a pool. I guess campaigning, talking about COVID. This is pre uh, president. Um, maybe he just won the presidency and he's president elect. By the way, I never knew what president elect was until he won because once he won, it was like president elect, president elect. We no longer <laughs> President Trump. Um, but he goes on this tangent, and this is not throwing shade at him. I'm not. Look, Joe Biden's our president. I support our president. I support when Trump was our president. He, I, I wasn't someone who said he wasn't my president. He was my, he was my, he was my fucking president. You know, like just deal with it, like kind of thing. Do I support all of uh, his policies, Biden and Trump? Like, no, I don't support all the policies. Do I support some of his policies? Yeah, I support some of the policies. Um, should Biden be out there bombing Syria? I don't know. Maybe I don't know. You do what you do, man. You're old. You do your thing. You're seventy-eight, man. Let it rip. If I was seventy-eight. I'd be bombing the shit out of every... I'm kidding. In this case, my employers are out there listening. I'm kidding. I wouldn't do that. I would I would give money to the homeless and buy socks for people. Um, It's a joke. I'm kidding. I would do that, though. I have done that. Um, Damn. Oh, yeah. The corn pop story. Just watch it. Just YouTube. Joe Biden, corn pop. He talks about his friend named corn pop. 
or this guy named Corn Pop. Corn Pop, he said Corn Pop was a bad dude and he ran with some bad boys. So what did I do? I went ahead and bought a shirt that says Corn Pop was a bad dude. He ran with some bad boys. And he's got a pair of his American-made sunglasses, Tom Cruise style with the fucking American flag on it. Because what am I more than anything? I'm a fucking American and I love America. And America is the best country in the world. And I don't care what you say. It's a beautiful country. Made of beautiful people. Made of beautiful, not beautiful, disastrous mistakes. But guess what? America is good at. We fix that shit, boy. Takes a while, but we do. Um, but that's that for me in the show with me. The show with Michael Labs. That's my name. Um, I'm going to go ahead and clock out right now. Um, thank you so much for watching. You can donate to the podcast if you want to. If you don't want to, don't do it. But like, comment, subscribe. Listen to the podcast over and over. Tell a friend about it till they tell you to shut the hell up and leave. Um, what else? Oh, new vlog going up Monday. Give you kind of a behind-the-scenes sneak peek. Um, more of like my money situation. Um, I'm going to talk kind of like the way I'm eating right now. Um... But yeah, that's about it. Go through the application process. About to start that now. Get myself out there. Um, but I don't really have much more to say. Thank you guys so much for listening of the Michael Lapp Show. I'll catch you guys in episode 210. Peace out. See ya.